Hi Game Makers, this is a tutorial on Tile Collision. Um, it's pretty easy and simple to set up and once you've done it you can use it in as many rooms as you like so no matter how big your game gets you're always going to have Tile Collision. So let's get started. Okay so for this video I'm just going to assume uh, you know next to nothing about the Tile Editor and tiling in general. Apologies if I do oversimplify things. Uh, I just want to make sure that everybody can do this regardless of their knowledge and skill level. The first thing you'll need to do is to have uh, some kind of tile set to use. Uh, this is one that I imported from my other game. Uh, the size of the tiles are 16 by 16. Uh, that's important because I'm going to be using that quite a few times. Uh, whatever size tiles you use, uh, so for example 32 by 32 or 64 by 64, uh, that's the numbers you should be using. So once you have a, a tile set, we actually need to create one rather than just having a sprite. So uh, create tile set and no sprite should become the tile set sprite. And if everything has gone correctly, you should see all your tiles um, in neat little squares. Oops. And you can change the size of the tiles, the width and height um, in this part here. Um, if you have your tiles all aligned with each other, you don't have to mess about with any part, with any of the rest of it. One thing to know is the top left square um, should always be left blank because Game Maker uses that square as like a eraser is the word I'm looking for. It's like an eraser basically. You can always right click as well. It has the same, it has the same effect. So now we have a tile set. Let's just uh, rename it to tile set uh, village. I want to have uh, a grass background. So I've got a single 16 by 16 pixel tile and I'm going to tell it to tile horizontally and vertically. Uh, this also has the added bonus uh, where you don't have black borders uh, where your room ends. <clears throat> it just goes on forever and ever. Uh, kind of, it has the same effect that the, the old RPG games have, um, like Dragon Quest 1 and 2, for example. All right, so we now need a tile layer and we're going to call this uh, Tiles Terrain make sure you make a copy of uh, what your layer is called because we're going to need this for the collision code on this part on the right hand side we need to add the tile set we're going to use And you can see, you can see the, the game maker editor's already uh, got its own eraser icon in the top left. Um, if you don't know, uh, game maker will number the tiles uh, from the top left onwards, and the order is like this. So the, the top left tile is going to be zero, and one, two, three, four, five, six, etc. What I like to do for my tile sets is have all the tiles that I want to be able to walk on in the top row and everything else um, can go elsewhere because then we can just say any tile with a value less than or equal to six. So these, these six tiles we can walk on and everything else will be impassable. Let's just quickly make a room with these tiles. <clears throat> Let's do a smiley face. Why not? And then just add a statue. And maybe some skulls. Alright, that is it for the room. 
So the next thing we are going to do is to create the collision object. I'm going to call it OBJ, OBJ collision. And in the create event, we're going to say, uh, we're actually going to use the manual. So tile map get this one. We're going to copy this code and put it into the create event. Uh, we don't need this and we don't need this. We just need to re rename this to tiles terrain and I'm going to rename this to tile as well. Okay, so we have to, what, what this code is going to do is it's going to let us know uh, the number of the tiles. So from one to say 120. And that's that. those numbers are what we're going to use to determine whether uh, we can walk over that tile or not. We need a few more variables. We need uh, H cells equals room width divided by 16. V cells equals room height divided by 16. And we need two for loops. Okay, so this is going to create our grid now. We're going to say, uh, have this piece of code in here. We need to make a small change. So it's asking for the cell X, which is just the grid coordinates. So we're going to say XX and cell Y is going to be YY. So this code is going to give us the integer this code gives the integer value of the tile and we'll say if tile is less than or equal to six these are the tiles that i want the player to walk on then we'll say a grid x x y y equals zero can move else Can't move a grid x x y y equals one, and that's it. We're just going to copy this code and put it into the draw event. And this is just to show the ones and zeros just to sh make sure it's working properly and we want to say draw text xx times 16 yy times 16 string a grids xx yy close brackets make sure I've not made any mistakes and I haven't put it in the room yet so um, just drag this anywhere, it's fine. Uh, one thing I would do if I didn't mention it is just have your instance layer above everything else. Um, this is unless you want the tiles to be drawn on top of the instances, which you could do for, for say roofs and archways and stuff. You might have a second tile layer for that, but for this example, we don't need it. So let's just run the game and make sure this is working. Awesome, so every square that has something other than that has something on it that isn't grass is a one working perfectly so let's just create uh, a, a little player sprite uh, edit image
All right, so now create a new object, OBJ player, and give it the player sprite. Let's add it to the room first. As long as it's not on impassable terrain, or even if it is, you can do that, but just put it on the grass for now. And in the step event, we want to say grid x equals the floor of x divided by 16. And grid y equals the floor of y divided by 16. Now we can put in some movement code. So if uh, keyboard check pressed vk up. Now we want to check to see if this particular tile is empty. So we're going to say if obj collision dot a grid grid x grid y minus 1 is equal to 0 then y minus equal to 16 one thing we are not accounting for is say for example we're at the very edge of the grid it's going to give us an error if we're trying to do like a minus 1 or go greater than, than H and V cells. So we need to say uh, if if grid Y is greater than zero and this, then we can move up. So now for down, we want to say uh, if grid y is less than v cells minus 1 and obj collision dot a grid grid x grid y plus 1 is equal to 0. then y plus equal to 16 if keyboard check pressed vk left if grid x is greater than 0 and obj collision dot a grid grid x uh, we want minus one grid y equals zero and x minus equal to sixteen and finally if keyboard check pressed vk right if grid x is less than uh, obj collision dot v cell uh, h cells minus one And OB, OBJ collision dot A grid grid X plus one grid Y equals zero, then X plus.
plus equals to 16. One thing I've got to do is to put obj collision dot there for v cells because it's our player object doesn't have a v cells variable, so that's going to give us an error. Let me just check. This looks okay. All right, let's run the game and we should have some easy collision movement. Excellent, so I can move anywhere where there's a zero and anywhere where there's a one, I cannot. And it also doesn't let me move off the map. Like I said, as long as you, all you have to do is pop pop the obj collision into every room where you want collision and you don't have to do anything more than that that's it bye for now guys